Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Royal Chess. My name is Jan Marcos and I have prepared a series on Carpal strategical wins for you and this is the second part of the series. In the first part we focused on the uh, on, on the game um, between Carpo and Spassky from 1974 where Carpo uh, used very nicely weak uh, squares in his opponent's camp. And in this video we will again focus on um, a game between Carpo and Spassky, this time from Montreal 1979. Uh, and we will have a look how, on how um, Carpo was able to fight an isolated pawn. Isolated pawns arise in um, quite quite a few openings, and it's nice to to know how to fi fight against uh, this weapon of your opponent. So let us have a look at the game. Um, the game is Carpo Spassky from Montreal, 1979. Uh, it will take some time before the isolated pawn uh, appears on the board, so please be patient, and uh, also the, the opening is quite interesting. So let's have a look. White played d4, so Carpo played d4, and Spassky played knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5. This is quite an interesting um, setup by Black. Um, Black um, seems to play the Nimzo Indian, uh, but in fact he waits um, he when, waits for the knight to appear on f3 and then he switches from the in complex of Indian defenses uh, to the queen's uh, gambit because in this way he avoids the Karlsbad structure which means c takes d5, e takes d5 where the knight quite often goes to e2 instead of f3. So after d5 white white knight c3, bishop e7 so we really are having a uh, very classical opening, the queen's gambit declined, bishop f4. Maybe this move is um, not so uh, easy to understand for club players, usually the, the bishop goes all the way to g5 uh, in order to pin the knight and, and uh, increase the pressure on the center. But bishop f4 is also not without venom because um, the bishop sometimes controls the uh, the c7 square, uh, which allows white to uh, to attack on c7, so this forces black to play c7, c5 quite quite soon in the game. And also, when the bishop is on f4, uh, it's not so easy for black to exchange the bishops as if it was on g5. So it's an interesting uh, move, which keeps the tension, and actually, it's uh, the bishop f4 line is quite popular these days. Castling, white played e3, and black played c5. Exactly the problem with the bishop on f4 is um, that uh, the setups with b6 or c6 are less attractive um, in, in, in many ways for black because the bishop simply controls the queen side better from uh, f4 than it would control it from g5. So now white took, we are still in some uh, deep, uh, in some deep, uh, theory and black played knight c6. Uh, black is not uh, hurrying uh, to take on c5 because uh, he hopes that maybe he can take it with some other piece and therefore not lose a tempo as black played already bishop e7 and then uh, another move with the bishop uh, in order to play bishop uh, takes c5. That's something what black doesn't want to do. Or black wants white to force him to take on c5, for example, with a3. Now white played queen c2, queen a5, and now white al already played a3, and um, as b2, b4 is already in the air, uh, black now takes. Uh, importantly enough, uh, after b4, black can take, because there is, a, there is a rook hanging on a1, so after bishop takes c5, white played simply rook d1. Of course, white doesn't want to castle, uh, to the queen side, as the queen side is already quite corrupted. But at this moment, b4 is 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 already is kind of a threat. I don't know if now uh, immediately, but uh, surely in, in the uh, near future. Therefore, black decided to play bishop e7, and white played knight d2 in order to to get rid of the a5 queen. 
uh, he wants to play some knight b3 sooner or later and also the, the d5 uh, pawn starts to feel a bit uncomfortable because it's not easy to cover him in all the lines. Now the main line is e5 with a very complicated fight, e5 uh, where black uh, gives away the stability of his center but tries to be active uh, while white's king is still on e1. But uh, after knight d2, Spassky chose bishop d7 instead, which is a, a good move anyway, and white developed, bishop e2, black played rook fc8, and white developed again, and now black played queen d8. So basically black uh, went away with the rook so that he can uh, come back with the queen and the rook is in uh, is, is playing. It's actually x-raying the c2 queen so um, the, the rook on c8 is quite relevant. And now white took and black took with the pawn. And our topic, or the topic of this video has arisen. Now we are having this isolated pawn. By definition, uh, the isolated pawn is such a pawn which cannot be covered by uh, another pawn, um, as there are no as there are no pawns on uh, the uh, the nearby mm, files. So there is no c pawn, there is no e pawn. Therefore, the d5 pawn is isolated. And uh, well, usually the um, the isolated pawn arises on d5 or d4. It's not so common to have it on e5 or e4. Basically, the thing with the isolated pawn is that uh, it uh, tends to be weaker and weaker once some minor pieces are being exchanged. Uh, that's why, for example, black didn't take uh, with the knight in the previous move, but he took with the pawn and he kept these two knights on board. So, so that there are more pieces and the weakness of the isolated d5 pawn is not being felt so much. Uh, also, we have to say that uh, not only the isolated pawn on d5 is weak, but also the square in front of it, because there are no pawns on the c file and on the e file, no black pawns, I mean, uh, then white can uh, jump with with uh, some piece to d4 and black cannot really um, drive it away with his pawn. This means that black uh, has to think also uh, quite a lot about which pieces is he going to exchange. For example, this e7 bishop is much more valuable than the d7 bishop because this d7 bishop cannot fight against any piece on d4 as this d4 square is black and this is a light square bishop. So um, basically uh, for black it is better to exchange the d7 bishop and uh, generally he wants to keep as many pawns uh, on as many minor pieces on board as possible and white wants to exchange as many minor pieces as possible. Also we have to say that uh, normally uh, the side which uh, has got an isolated pawn also gets some kind of an active of activity for this for this pawn as this pawn creates some kind of a center for the side having it for example this d5 pawn creates some outposts on c4 and e4 and um, this uh, bigger control over the center quite often results into some attack on the king side but in this moment, uh, black pieces are not prepared for an attack uh, on the queen side, uh, king side, so rather black probably would like to uh, use the outpost on c4 and just jump there and um, create some activity on the queen side. Well, now Carpo played knight f3, which is a very normal move, and black played h6. Please note that it's not a good idea to take on d5 now, because once white takes the, the x-ray uh, on against the white uh, queen is being felled and black plays knight before and then takes on d5 and simply is an exchange up. But after h6 white played a lovely move, he played knight e5 because he wants to, to start exchanging the minor pieces. And this move is a bit better than knight d4 because after the exchange on e5 uh, the bishop 
uh, is able to switch to a very safe and good good uh, outpost on d4. Uh, on f4, this bishop is a bit um, sidetracked. Uh, it doesn't have a, uh, much contact with the center, so he would love to 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 be transferred to d4. And after knight takes e5, this happens very quickly. Bishop e6. Now I took on c6. Please note again that there is some tactics that after b takes c6, there is bishop a6. And this rook is, uh, is, is suddenly short of squares and white wins on the spot winning an exchange. So black had to take with the rook. And uh, white is, um, is slowly fulfilling his plan. Now bishop f3 attacking the, 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 weak, the weak pawn, queen b6 and queen b6. And now bishop e5 is a very, very typical and uh, at the same time very nice move. Really, this bishop needed to be transferred from from the um, somehow uh, offside uh, position on f4 to the center position on d4. Now, black played knight e4 because there are already threats that white sooner or later takes on f6 and then takes on d5. Uh, so, with knight e4, black fights against that. Um, now, white could maybe contemplate to to take on e4 with the with the uh, with the bishop and now with the queen, but uh, somehow uh, the strong two bishops might give black enough counterplay, and also b2 is weak, so maybe it is, this doesn't really uh, work even tactically. So um, after knight d4, white still, uh, Kerpo still uh, keeps his strategical. Uh, posture and he simply applies it simply and soundly with queen e2 going away from the x-ray and black took on c3 because d5 was weak and for example now uh, bishop takes a3 again would be an interesting uh, possibility but white can take on g7 and naturally uh, with such a weak king and all the heavy pieces still on board White is having all three his uh, heavy pieces. Um, this is a big advantage. Of course, black is having some ma uh, majority on the queen side, but more relevant is that this king will probably uh, get uh, mated uh, sooner or later. So after bishop c3, black simply and humbly played rook d8. Well, uh, now we have to say that uh, White has improved his position uh, to a big extent. Uh, he was able to exchange both pairs of knights. And without knights, um, there is an interesting thing about uh, quality about uh, the positions without knights, um, which are that they tend to be, uh, well, less mm, tactical, less... Uh, incomprehensive and it's easier to, to deal with them in, with strategical means. And also uh, without knights um, there is an additional possibility for white which is to play to double the rooks along the d-file and then sometimes play e3, e4. It's quite difficult for black to, to cover uh, the, the pawn on d5 and also the rook behind the pawn. So with e3, e4 white sometimes gets additional um, additional possibility how, how to attack the, the d5 pawn. So white played rook d3. Naturally bishop f5 is just is just stupid because of rook takes d5. So rook, the rook is quite safe on d3. Rook c d6, rook f d1, rook 6 d7. So um, now this rook on d7 is, is sufficiently covered. Uh, against the e3, e4 move, black would simply take and then uh, taking on d7 is nothing. But white can uh, try to, 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 to get rid of the e6 bishop and then play e4 and take the rook on d7. And this is what he did. He played rook 1, d, d2, queen b5, rook, queen d1. So as you can see, there are already three pieces attacking the d5. Uh, pawn and also the d file b6 and now white uh, found a very nice way how to how to get rid of this uh, e6 um, bishop he will simply push his he will simply push his pawns on the king side in order to get 
the pawn to f5 and then uh, when the bishop retreats he will play e4 and attack also the d7 rook and not only the the pawn on d5 g3 bishop f8 bishop g2 bishop e7 as you can see without knights there is not much uh, black can do he simply stays uh, uh, in his defensive um, position and and hopes that he will survive the uh, upcoming bat battle queen h5 a6 h3 so white plays it really slowly queen c6 king h2 a5 uh, basically um, Karpov was very good um, in uh, um, creating uh, that sorts of positions where his opponent has basically not much to do or nothing to do uh, today uh, also some players are able to, to do this and mostly computers are very strong in this style they are simply uh, very good at um, finding positions where uh, their opponents have no counterplay and then playing it slowly so now I went f4 and black cracked he played f6 weakening uh, the e6 uh, bishop and also uh, this this diagonal so white return queen d1 queen b5 g4 and uh, as you can see the f4 f5 move comes closer g5 but Carpo being Carpo uh, always goes for prophylaxis on prevention when possible so he went simply king h1 so that he doesn't get any dangerous check along this diagonal queen c6 and now he played f5 bishop f7 and his long plan of getting uh, rid of this e6 bishop uh, was successful and now he played e4 after e4 black cannot take anymore because after rook takes d7 white is simply rook up this rook was insufficiently covered so after e4 black played king g7 and uh, accepted the fact that he will lose the pawn on d5 white took on d5 black played king c queen c7 and it might seem that um, that black is having some kind of a blockade if he puts something on d6 but um, Carpo will show very nicely that this block blockade is an illusion he played rook e2 black played b5 and of course maybe white can also put the rook to e6 and just ex um, give away an exchange and then play bishop e4 and the queen to f5 that could win in the long run as well but at this exact moment uh, b5 was a time uh, trouble mistake and white is able to take on e7 after rook takes e7 played d6 and again uh, uh, there is some tactics along the d file and Spassky probably counted on the fact that uh, this time the tactics will work for him because he played queen c4 and now white cannot uh, immediately take on e7 because after that black can take on d3 and is simply uh, an exchange up uh, although this 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 pawn seems to be rather dangerous um, it's probably not black can cover the e8 square and be be safe uh, but after d6 uh, queen c4 white is having a nice intermediate move which is b3 uh, now he can uh, drive um, get rid of the c4 queen and if the queen goes away then white is uh, can take on e7 and if the queen takes on b3 which is probably the main line queen takes b3 queen takes b3 uh, bishop takes b3 uh, d takes e7 rook takes d3 now naturally the pawn queens and this is the uh, that, that would be the end of of the game so basically after b3 uh, and like directly after the time trouble or the time tra time control uh, Spassky decided to give up so basically what we saw was an excellent uh, technical um, uh, achievement by Anatoly Karpo who uh, was of course perfectly aware or perfectly aware um, about the uh, plans of uh, the side fighting the 
um, the isolated pawn uh, and he of course knew that he has to exchange as many minor pieces as possible and then just attack uh, on the uh, on the d file to um, put uh, the defensive defending um, pieces into passive positions and then uh, he, he found a nice way of uh, moving his uh, kingside pawns so uh, a very nice and instructive achievement by Anatoly Karpo and uh, we will have uh, a look at some other topic uh, in our next video so please stay with us and this is everything for the mom for the time being so have a nice day Bye-bye.